Good evening, old chap. Are you all right? I won't lie to you. Tell me what you have discovered about vampires, Clarence. They've always been here. And if you search for long enough, you realize others know about these devils too. I'm not alone. Have you shared your research with anybody else? No. But I've published my leaflets all across the city, hoping that someday someone will realize I'm printing the truth. What do you mean you're not alone? Who have you met? The Guard of Prewin. The Brotherhood of St. Paul Stoll, Ichabod Throgmorton. Those names always pop up when you dig deep enough. Have you spoken with any of them? No. With the quarantine, it's almost impossible to leave the West End. But. As a doctor, maybe you could, Johnny. Are you asking me to help you prove the existence of vampires, Clarence? Yes, Johnny. Please, gather all the information you can find about vampires and bring it to me. You're the only friend I have left. I need you. You need some rest, Clarence. You should try to sleep. Good evening, Jonathan. How are you? I'm still investigating from inside the Ascalon Club. Can we talk? Of course, my dear. How is your investigation going? I have decided to explore beyond the dictates of reason. What do you mean? You may on occasion find this house closed when you visit me. If so, it is because I have gone undercover. Sort of. Who are you going to surveil? I hope you're not considering spying on McCullum or the guard of Prewan. No. I intend to ask a few questions in parts of town I rarely venture into. 
dirty places where a delicate lady like myself should never be seen. When will you return? As soon as possible. And I don't intend to stay away for long. There are many paintings adorning the walls here. Yes. Did you paint them? No, my dear. But some of them. I have had a long time to learn from the best. I'm currently working on what could be my greatest masterpiece. What is this masterpiece? Your portrait, my dear Jonathan. It will be my gift to you, if I ever have time to finish it. Have you met any famous painters? Are you trying to divine my age by cross-checking historical dates, my dear? That's a devious parlor trick. Well, Elizabeth, I tried my best. Don't I deserve some reward, at least? Well, if you must know, I even posed for the greats. Now that you know it, you may recognize me when visiting museums. I have investigated new sources of infection, and I may have found a new type of scowl. One suffering from heavy mutations that is extremely contagious. Scowls come in various forms, you know. They are simply degenerate versions of their makers. I believe these families are different, and I'm currently pursuing a lead. I know I can find the true source of contagion by finding who created these creatures. That would be great news. Be very careful, my dear, when dealing with such creatures. Goodbye, my dearest. Goodbye, my beloved. There's an open window on the second floor. I should be able to get in through that. In front of you stands the tall queen. Can that be Doris Fletcher's voice? Where does it come from?
I have this thirst for blood. It's locked, all right. Who are you? You who dared enter my realm. Are you here to worship or mock me? I'm here to put an end to the vampire epidemic, Miss Fletcher. Ah. But Doris Fletcher is no more. She was consumed by this putrid flesh that now enshrouds her. You feel anger for what happened to you. But I can help you. I'm a doctor, Miss Fletcher. Doris Fletcher is no more. All that remains are the dreams of the queen she was. And the queen she'll be. Until then, all shall die, for that was her final wish. Your blood, pardon to me, my servants, avenge me! Ugh! <sighs> 
I beg you, wait. What? I... I don't want to die. And I did not come to kill you, Miss Fletcher. Will you spare me, then? Save this cadaverous carcass of mine. Does your heart beat a little faster now? You fancy me, then, Doctor? No, Miss Fletcher. My dead heart will beat for only one. Ah! Is she pretty? Is she sweet and tender? To me, yes. Ah! I hate her already. I know. And this is partly why you must be destroyed. What you just said. That I did not come here to kill you, yes. But I realize now the threat you embody must be stopped. <sighs> Will I be remembered? Will you? You were Doris Fletcher, the greatest actress of her generation. No one can take that from you. Thank you. And farewell. Farewell, Doris. Bravo! So dramatic! I love it! McCullum! How strange I seem to find you whenever I'm inquiring about that scal infestation. I mean you no harm. I'm not here for you. But once I put all the pieces of the puzzle together, I'm sure we'll have a little chat, you and me. Stay away from me, McCollum. You and all your war dogs. That I can't guarantee, Dr. Reed. But I'll let you go. For now. I should probably leave the theater right now. I cannot enter. The West End should be safe now. But London is not. It would be wise to benefit from the Ascalon's protection while I continue my return. Search to a great hunt. People want me dead. I need to leave now. So Doris just needed to be close to her audience to infect them. Contagion through skin. Best be moving on. Very disturbing. I said stay away, sir.
What news, Jonathan? I've heard you've now joined the vampire elite of London. Did Elizabeth tell you? So it's Elizabeth now. My, my. Things are moving quickly. I turn my back for a moment and away you go. Have you seen Lady Ashbury recently? Yes, she popped in yesterday. Told me about your new friends in the West End. Just a courtesy visit then? Yes, and no. She was en route to the docks, I think, following a lead concerning your maker. How's the situation at the Pembroke? We're still holding out. Question is, for how long? What we really need is hope, Jonathan. Hope for a better tomorrow. I may have found the source of the contagion. Doris Fletcher, the actress. Thankfully, in the end, she was destroyed by fire. Really? Oh, please, do tell me more. Doris was a heavily mutated skull. Almost a new breed entirely. It's as if the disease had completely altered her mind and body. Highly contagious. As if the disease had taken control of her will? Yes. Once a beautiful and brilliant woman, she became motivated by hate alone. Oh, she was a beauty. I met her when she visited the hospital to cheer up the sick. Too bad the fire destroyed her. But it was probably for the best. Have you heard of similar cases? No, I don't think so. Except, perhaps, it reminds me of an old report from the Brotherhood. Well, more an article, really. What was it about? The author, a friar, referred to a rare form of contagion in a skull he observed during the Black Death. The carrier was always female. They called them icors. I'll come back later. Thank you, Edgar. Always a pleasure to see you, my friend. Hello, sir. Sorry to disturb you at this hour. I'm a doctor inquiring about the epidemic. May I come in? A doctor, you say? No, thank you. It cannot be safe for a blind man to live here alone. Let me enter, sir. I swear I mean you no harm. Well, a voice never lies, and yours clearly is the voice of a gentleman. All right, doctor, come on in. Tell me, how do you see the world these days?
So what is the name of my nocturnal visitor? I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. As I already explained to you, I'm inquiring about the epidemic. Dr. Reed? The eminent surgeon? My god! I'd never have expected a brilliant physician like you to knock on my door. You flatter me, sir. No, sir, I am flattered. I read all your work when I still had my sight. I loved it. I'm Mason Swanborough, by the way. And what else have you learned about me, Mr. Swanborough? I know you assisted Professor Carell in France, and that you invented a new blood transfusion method based on his work. Yes. Those were frustrating but exciting days. I loved it. Yes, the thrill of research and discovery. This is what drives people like us, Dr. Reed. Oh, how I envy you. Does someone take care of you in this isolated place? My sister Loretta and I have our daily routine. Every morning and evening she comes by so we can talk and eat. Then she leaves and I stay. Do you not appreciate your sister's visits? Loretta is the best and worst thing that happened to me. And I believe she could say the same thing about me. Where does your sister go? Well, let's just say, she earns enough money for us both. What's so amusing about that? I won't hide the truth from you. Loretta sells a fake miracle elixir to the sick people of Whitechapel. How is the sanitary situation evolving in Whitechapel these days? I hear them hissing and scratching at my door every night. The sick made mad by the fever. But these walls are thick, and my lock is solid. You seem unwell, sir. Do you need my assistance? Actually, I feel worse than usual. Can you give me something? Yes. I can give you a little something that has been proven effective. Thank you, Doctor. Goodbye, Mr. Swanborough. Wandering in this part of town at night, you're either brave or a fool. It's locked. Could this be the scarf you lost, Miss Popper? It is much more than a scarf to me. It is the only thing that connects me to my family and my country. Thank you so much. Goodbye, Miss. Good evening. It's Father Whitaker, my son. Tobias Whitaker, confess why you burnt those people alive. I have done what no one was ready to do. I will smite the flesh of the unclean to protect the righteous. You are just another heartless murderer, exploiting the epidemic to kill with impunity. No! No. The only way to contain the spread is to strike at the source itself, the proliferating sick. You're not the savior of London. You're just a glorified sadist. I take no pleasure in this awful cleansing, Dr. Reed. I am only driven by the thousands of innocents I save each night. Why 
Why did you send Samuel to the cemetery, Tobias? What did you see there? I sent him on a vision. A dream of a dreadful and laughing queen covered with blood. Sleeping with the dead and feeding on the fear of the dying. A laughing queen dressed in blood. Tell me more. This epidemic is her feast, the announcement of her return. Against her, science is no more than a child's toy. But who is she? She is the mother of harlots and abomination of the earth. She is Babylon, drunk on the blood of the saints. Why did I sent him on a... You... Good evening. Your disciple, Samuel, stole from the dead in Stonebridge Cemetery. I have proof of his crime and proof of his death. No! Samuel was the best of us. So devoted, so zealous. He gave all he had for the cause. He tirelessly preached the good word. He defiled the dead with his petty thefts. That's how he financed your misguided crusade. Think what you will. When this city is saved, he will be praised for his devoted fortitude. He walked boldly into the mouth of abomination. Your precious Samuel used you. He was an immoral crook. <sighs> if that's true, then he will be my burden to bear during this endless night. How is the sun? Don't. I have. The money. Good evening, my. Loretta, your miraculous formula wouldn't even cure a common cold, and you know it. The Swamborough's cordial secret ingredient is hope, Doctor. And it's something people around here really need. A placebo effect is real and has benefit. But in your case, you could be murdering your customers, who may die because they are not receiving the necessary medical attention. Medical attention? In Whitechapel? Trust me, my cordial is the best option they have, since it is the only one. If your true purpose was to help, you wouldn't take money from the poor for your snake oil. Oh, but to pay for it is part of the process, Doctor. If it were free, they wouldn't believe in it. Loretta, why do you feel so guilty about your brother? I don't expect him to forgive me. All I can do is make amends for what I did. By making him a crook and a criminal? What if somebody decides to make him pay for your scam? Mason is totally capable of defending himself. Just leave us be. We're perfectly fine. I know how guilt feels between a brother and sister. Are you sure you're not trying to ease your own remorse? Mason wants to be useful. Can you understand that? And chemistry is his passion and the Swanborough Cordial gives him a purpose in life. Goodbye, Miss Swanborough. Perhaps we'll talk again. Good evening, Zhao Shu. Wang Shanghao, Dr. Reed. It's good to see you again. What are you doing with your time? Now that you're back in Whitechapel. I've decided to help the poor and sick of the neighborhood by handing out medicine. That's very charitable of you. But why do it at night? I've noticed that the most desperate people tend to go out after dark. Hence my presence. To help them when I can. Giving out medicine? How can you afford to do that? I am a rich widow, Dr. Reed. My departed husband left me enough money to last the rest of my life. I can spend some on those who don't have any. Why don't you move?
to a better neighborhood. I thought about it, I confess. To go back to the same empty home every day still hurts me a lot. Why stay here then? I am a woman of habit, Dr. Reed. And for now I am happier being useful in a familiar place than I would be anywhere else. How do you feel now that you're back in Whitechapel? I've decided to follow your advice, sir. I won't forget the dead, but my efforts will be for the living. I've no doubt. That is a wise and useful attitude in this part of town. To be completely honest with you, I am also doing this for myself. If I'm destined to survive this epidemic, I need my life to have some purpose. Do you still think about your departed husband? Of course I do. I'll never forget my beloved Matthew, but how do I put it? Now I miss him more than I want him back. I know what you mean. And I think it means you're getting better. Maybe death will take me the way it took Matthew. Without warning and without mercy. But until then, I live on. How is the sanity? My only relief is that my Matthew died before seeing the madness that approaches. I'm afraid we won't survive this trial, Dr. Reed. Goodbye for now. Good evening, Xiao Shu. Wang Shang. Good. Good evening, Mr. Petrescu. Surely you have someone else to bother, Mr. Doctor. Tell me everything you know about Camellia, the mute florist. I do not believe in the afterlife, Doctor, but I'm almost convinced Camellia is an angel. She volunteered to give out our medical leaflets. How is the sanitary situation in Whitechapel? Terrible. That's quite an accusation. Stop pretending, Mr. Doctor. All you wanted was to confront Dorothea. You never intended to help Whitechapel's people. There isn't just one way to help Whitechapel. Your way seems to attract sorrow and despair, Mr. Doctor. Your kind of care is not what Whitechapel needs. Tell me... I do... I feel... Are you... Under... She's... You say... Well... How do you feel, Mr. I would not even accept fresh water from you, Doctor. I don't need your help. Yes, you do. Please, take this. You'll feel better. I said I don't want anything. But I'll keep this for those who really need it.
Evening, Rufus. Good evening, Mr. Reed. Tell me your feelings about Seymour's death, Rufus. I am sad for Mrs. Fishburn, not for her dead son. I was afraid of him and his threats. I don't think a lot of people will miss him. So how is your new life going? Good. I have a roof over my head and warm meals. Mrs. Fishburn is the best. But she's so sad. I hear her crying at night. Even if she did take you in, Mrs. Fishburn lost her son, who she loved very much. I know, but it makes me feel funny. I should feel bad for being here after Seymour died, not happy. Try to help her as much as she helps you, Rufus. Help each other through the grief. Mrs. Fishburne has been like a mother to me, and it's my turn to help her the best I can. Heard anything about Sean Hampton's shelter lately? Well, I heard that Mr. Hampton has been very sick, but now he's better. Are you worried about the sanitary situation? I never really felt safe in this town anyway. Now's the first time that everyone seems to feel the same way as me. Is anything worrying you right now? Gunshots? I hear them every night. Who's firing? Who are they shooting at? That's what's scary. So long, Roof. Favorite meal? Good evening, Mrs. Fishburne. May I come in, please? Of course, Dr. Reed. It's locked, all right. I'm so sorry about your loss, Mrs. Fishburne. Thank you, Dr. Reed. Could you check Rufus's health for me, please? I've been taking care of this young nipper since my poor Seymour died. Very well. But why so nervous? Even if he lives with me now, Rufus still spends too much time outside. He grew up in the streets, you see, and he's kept his old habits. So, you live here with Rufus now. And how is everything? Yeah. We both had our share of tragedy. But I suppose it's a relief not to be alone in life. Did Rufus talk to you about his past? I knew the boy had a hard time in the streets, but I had no idea how miserable he really was. And I suspect he won't tell me all that he remembers. I'd like to know more about your son's death, Stella. I was so afraid to see Seymour arrested and executed that I never thought about him being murdered. I'm sure his last thoughts were for you, Mrs. Fishburne. Seymour was a terrible threat to the community, but he truly loved you. Your words break my heart as much as they bring me peace, Dr. Reed. How do you mean? The murder of my son made me understand what the other families must have felt. I shouldn't have protected him for so long. You have Rufus now. Make him a righteous man, a good man. That may be your path to peace. You are a good person, Dr. Reed. I wish we'd met sooner. Do you have any news about Sean Hampton's shelter? I just heard the sad saint keeps on helping the sick and poor. God bless his soul. Aren't you worried about the conditions around here? Hate everywhere. The city will not sink because of this flu. It's the violence that will finish us all. Oh. <laughs> 
Goodbye, Miss Fishbone. Take care of yourself. The wet boot boys. Lost boys will be more fitting now. Good evening, sir. I'm amazed you made it back to the docks alone. Good for you. Well, I could say the same about you, young man. More to the point, who the hell are you? I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. And I am Archer Woodbead. Please excuse my assertiveness. I often forget I'm just an old prune. What can you tell me about this part of town? People used to feel safe around here. They had the gangs protecting them. Now all they do is bicker and plot against one another. Missing the good old days, are you not? Trust me, son. The longer you live, the less meaning your existence will have. You need to remember the days you still had beliefs. And what about the gangs? Back in my day, people trusted the wet boot boys. We looked out for the docks and its families. Nowadays, they're just a bunch of greedy fuckers. You were a gang member? I was their leader for a time, believe it or not. Now these bastards act like I'm nothing. Not one of them. They owe me some damn respect. If you were such a respected figure, surely you have many interesting stories about this part of town. You bet I do, but make no mistake. I'm no rat, sir. Some secrets are best left buried. Do you still know anyone? From the old days, I mean. Most of them are dead. I still give Miss Gillingham salutations. She doesn't remember me. She did once like me. Boy, <laughs> she was a beauty back then. Any remarkable new faces around here? Nobody. Well, there's that boy Rufus the Curse. I like him, despite the reputation he's made since his parents died. Poor little bastard. Who would you trust around here? The owner of the Turquoise Turtle's a decent fella. Tom's his name. Sean Hampton's all right, too. Don't particularly share his religious views. He's quite devout, if you catch my meaning. I'm sure a district as colorful as the docks must have plenty of stories about strange visitors and creepy characters. So, you want me to talk about the sewer dog, don't you? If you don't mind. The sewer dog is a bitch. Appropriately named, an old woman dressed in rags. She has an elegance, though. Despite her ugliness, I saw her once. Scared the life out of me. Have you always been so bitter? It's not bitterness, it's poorly masked disgust. When everything turns to shit, we all have to eat a spoon or two. As a practitioner, I believe science will provide a new standard of welfare. It's just a matter of time. I'd like to believe you, Doctor. But recently, all science has been good for is mustard gas and machine guns. But what about social progress? What about women getting the right to vote? Things can change for the better. I've never voted, not once. And my wife, God rest her soul, she was too busy taking care of the kids to vote. Tell me about the wet boot boys, Archer. I want to know more. We were there for the families and each other. It was us against the world. We were vicious, tough, even cruel. But we were united. You sound like you were some kind of radical union member. Yes, nowadays the communists and gangs squabble over pointless territory. Sounds stupid when you say it out loud. Tell me everything you know about the Guard of Prewen. Andrew never told me what they do. I do know they're vigilantes with military training. Access to some impressive firepower. And what is your personal opinion about the Guard, then? This Guard of Prewen is just another gang preying on the young and naive. Preying on people like my boy. I know how it works. I invented it. Why did your son really join the Guard of Prewen? If I believed in a higher power, I'd see this as punishment for my own sins. I deserve it for all the young men I enlisted back in the day. 
You don't believe in God, though, do you, Mr. Woodbeat? So why did he join? Now I think about it. Andrew joined the Guard, not to defy me, but to follow in my footsteps, to make me proud. So your son has left you nothing to explain his actions? No letter or message? Not even a note. I'm a proud man, Dr. Reed. But I would kneel and pray if I thought it would give me my Andrew back. Do you have any recent news on Sean Hampton's shelter? The man is still here. He's trying to help others despite the terrible things he endured. I'm impressed. Are you worried about the sanitary situation in London? I never thought I'd live to see the last days of London. Just another thing I was wrong about, I suppose. Goodbye, sir. You again, what are you... Are you worried about the conditions in London? I I've heard rumors about some sort of militia patrolling. Killing the sick. The wet boot boys are overrun. Do you need medical help, sir? Yeah, I do. If you can throw in some drugs, I can find use for that too. So you can sell them on the black market? Sorry. I'll only provide you with exactly what you need. Fair enough, Dr. Reed. That cost me nothing to ask. Welcome back to my humble shelter, Dr. Reed. Are you here to subdue me again? No, Sean. I just came by to see how you are. I feel all right. Why do you ask? Are you still feeding on corpses? No. It's almost as though the blood you forced me to drink has provided me eternal satisfaction. How is the sanitary situation in this part of town? There's a lot of sadness and pain in my flock. I believe we're not fully through the crisis. You should do something about it if you can, Doctor. How are things in your shelter? Between the mortals and the immortals, I mean. Even if we're all children of God, I've always maintained a strict frontier between the two communities. What do you fear? A few years ago, a scowl decided to pay a nocturnal visit to my sleeping customers. He got caught licking their necks in the dark. Since then, I have added a lock to the door. What if food became scarce? Wouldn't the immortals in your flock be tempted to feed on the living? Wouldn't you? The Skulls can feed on the dead, Doctor. And until Judgment Day, mortals will continue dying. How did you meet old Bridget? When younger, I used to patrol the streets at night, searching for lost souls. This is how I met her. It took me two months just to get her name. Now we support each other. Had you already visited their hideout in the sewers? Just once, and very briefly. Most of them are very discreet, and they see me as an outsider, even if I protect them. You really are a saint, Sean. Oh, no, sir, I'm not. But I know evil, and I believe goodwill and tenacity can make this world a better place. 
Have you seen Harriet Jones since taking her to Old Bridget? No. She is with the sewer scowls now. I don't go downstairs. What happened at the Pembroke? I guess we recognized each other. As scowls, I mean. She had but one thought. To punish. To get revenge upon everything and everyone. I realized I had to bring her here quickly. But why did she fake her own death? There was so much blood in her room. She attacked patients, too. I just lost her for a minute that night. When I found her, she had caused mayhem across the hospital. I slapped some sense into her, and we fled before getting caught. What happened then? We ran here through narrow streets and backyards. She kept saying that someone was talking to her in the dark, offering to avenge her. But I saw nobody. Would you let me listen to your chest, Sean? No, Dr. Reed. You already forced me to drink your blood, and I thank you for that, for I feel better now. But it was quite an unpleasant experience. It would help me greatly if you would allow me to give you a physical examination. I said no. I'm no subject of medical examination, and I intend only to obey and to kneel before God. Farewell, Sean. Take good care of your flock, and of yourself. Good evening, Mr. Grader. Are you sure nobody followed you here, Dr. Reed? Do you need help, Mr. Grader? Death by disease or by bullet? Do I really have to choose? You have a strange sense of humor, Dr. Reed. But thanks anyway. If I had stood by your side, we both could have changed things for good round here. As long as it's not holy water, I may find some use for it. Good evening, Milton. Good evening, Doctor. Still trying to save lives. Do you know that Nurse Hawkins is thinking of leaving the hospital? That's not a surprise. We've talked about it already. Does it not bother you? Sometimes I think she may be right. We should run away while we can. Question is, where can we go? Where is it safe? Goodbye, Milton. Done. J Hello again, Mother. Jonathan, back already? Good, good. I was just about to go outside to find you. You shouldn't stay away for so long. Tell me, Mother, how are you? All alone in this big house with only Avery to take care of you. I'm sad most of the time. Sad that you have left me here alone. Sad that you don't tell me when you come or go. I'm so sorry, Mother. 
It wasn't supposed to be like this. I was coming home. I was home. London, the Thames, and then it happened. What happened, Johnny? I lost my way. Somewhere between the boat and the house, my life changed completely. You should have told me, Johnny. I would have understood. You always were a secretive little boy. Mother, no. what do you mean? Of course. Do you think Avery is right? Do you think I should take better care of you? I don't blame you, but you abandoned me, son. A mother should not survive her children. It's unbearable to know you're not here anymore. I wish I could stay here and take care of you, but I don't belong here anymore. My new home is an empty room, as cold as night and as red as blood. You don't have to apologize to me, Johnny. Do you think I did not notice how much you have changed? Have I changed that much, Mother? Am I still your son? You are still, and you'll always be. Despite your pale skin, your bloody eyes, and that echoing sadness in your voice. Goodbye, Mother. Try to rest now. Goodbye, son. Please come back soon. Jonathan, my dear, bring me my glove. Thank you.